Joining us now to discuss what she writes about in this recent article for The Daily Signal is their senior news producer, Virginia Allen. Virginia, thank you for being here today. Great to be with you, Riley. Thanks for having me. So I love this story. It's very interesting. I'd like to hear more about your thoughts about the Goya Food CEO coming out and saying that this border policy will not cost Trump the Hispanic vote in, in November. Well, it was great to have Bob Inanaway on the Daily Signal podcast. And I ask him, you know, from your perspective as a Trump supporter yourself and as an individual who has, you know, has roots and, and history uh, in South America, you know, what is your perspective on the Hispanic vote? And he said, no, I think that in many ways, Hispanics in the United States, they really support Trump's border policies because they came to America legally. They did it the right way. They worked hard. They waited in line. And so Hispanic voters, they want to see that you know people aren't cutting that line, that they're doing it the legal way. I was actually just in El Paso, Texas, and I had the opportunity to talk to a mom of four down there, a wife named Stephanie, and she and her husband have built a business from the ground up. Her husband immigrated to the United States legally, and she was very clear you know, from, from her perspective, from the perspective of her community, yes, we want individuals to come to America, but there's a legal way to do it, and it is unfair to those who have done it the legal way for people to literally be constantly skipping the line. Yes, it's, it's unfair and it's dangerous. I mean, that position makes total sense to me. And Kamala Harris, what she's doing here is very clever. She wants to conflate legal and illegal immigration. Nobody, Trump is not opposed to illegal immigration. Yes, this is a nation of immigrants. My family came here from Ireland more than 150 years ago. I'm all in for that. I'm supportive of that. Anyone who wants to come here and be an American, assimilate into our culture, our value system, live by our rules, our laws, that's great. The more the merrier. The problem is when you have millions of people coming in massive hordes, largely, of course, single young you know, men coming from more than 100 countries all over the world flooding the system. And so I want to get your, your thoughts about this, too, because she brings up this other talking point about illegal immigration and how the system is just broken. She says the system just isn't built to equip this and we just need systemic reform. But no system anywhere on earth would be built to handle this kind of influx. So what do you have to say about that talking point? Actions speak louder than words. And right now what we're seeing is a real flip-flop from the Biden administration on border and immigration policies. And are encounters down at the southern border? Yeah, they are, because finally the Biden administration has started to introduce some of the policies <laughs> that were very similar to those of the Trump administration. But the big question, like you said earlier, is it too little too late? You know, 10 million illegal aliens are walking around in the United States, 662,000 criminal illegal aliens walking around in the United States. There have been uh, nearly 400 encounters at our southern border under the Biden administration of individuals on the U.S. terrorist watch list. I, I spoke um, with, uh, with someone with an official down on the southern border. His exact words were, mark my words, there will be another 9-11 style attack in the U.S. and it'll come from within because of the individuals that under the Biden-Harris administration they have allowed in. And so Harris can certainly be cracking down now. We we applaud that you know, slight crackdown. Much more needs to be done. It's a start in the right direction. But is it too little too late? Time will tell. But the situation right now is quite dire when you look at just the sheer numbers that have come in. And that's not even counting the numbers that we don't know, those unknown gotaways. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I, that, the, the idea of another attack is, is horrific. And, and by the way, this shouldn't even really be a partisan issue. I mean, people on all sides of the aisle should be concerned about the fact that we have dangerous people with either pending criminal charges or known criminal rap sheets coming into this country every single day while we speak even right now. And that also brings me to a point you just brought up. You were just in El Paso. What did you see down there? I was with someone who was from El Paso, and uh, he pointed out while we were walking down the streets of both El Paso and we went into Juarez, Mexico on Friday, and because of the color of clothing that some individuals were wearing and the tattoos that they had on her body, on their body, he was able to identify that's likely a cartel member, that's likely a cartel member. This was both within U.S. within U.S. borders on the streets of El Paso and as, in Juarez, Mexico, and I think that's something that's really important for Americans to understand 
is the control that the cartels have of the southern border, specifically on the Mexico side. They're determining who crosses and when. And human trafficking specifically, human smuggling, it's a multi-billion dollar business for the cartels every year. They're making so much money. And who can they charge more to? Well, they can charge more to individuals who don't want to get caught. People with criminal records who want to make sure they're avoiding border patrol, want to make sure they're avoiding law enforcement. Those stakes are much higher for those people. So the cartels can charge them more, can make more money. Really, at the end of the day, this is a fight against criminal cartel organizations that are very well organized, very sophisticated, and pose a severe threat to the United States and, of course, to Mexico as well. Yeah, absolutely. And now people are very worried about those cartels or other gangs, criminal organizations getting a real foothold here in the U.S. where you see members of, say, Trend de Aragua on the streets of San yep. Francisco or Chicago or taking over buildings in Aurora, Colorado, just outside of Denver. So we're at a critical point here. We, I mean, even Colony Ridge, the migrant colony inside of Texas, we have a colony, a migrant colony forming this side of the border. So I think it's totally reasonable for any American of either political party, Republican or Democrat, to be pretty worried about what's in store for this country moving forward. But as we come up against a break here, Virginia, I'd like to ask about your final thoughts about this comment from the Goya CEO and really this position overall. You know, it's so critical. This issue is going to be one of the core issues in this election, and it mm -hmm. should be because it's affecting every single community yes. across America. It's affecting our school systems, our health care systems. And so there's a reason why politicians are addressing it now. And I just you know, encourage every listener, be looking at the facts, be looking at the data, go to the CBP website, look at those numbers, uh, because this is an issue that no doubt, if it hasn't started affecting your community, now it will soon. Yes, absolutely. Very well said. It's it's important to, to follow this story, especially because, as you said, every state is a border now. It's affecting all of us, or at least it will at some point soon. And you just can't have a country without borders. So set aside your own partisan differences for a moment and just think about the bottom line. This is a very dangerous, precarious situation, and it needs to stop, and it is the result of policies that can be changed. Having said that, Virginia, thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. And thanks for all the good work out there. Please keep it up. Thanks so much, Riley.